the way you know you've created an iconic look is that people wear it on Halloween. It becomes a Halloween costume. Hey, what's up? It's me, image architect Law Roach, and we're going to go behind the scenes with who, what, where. Ari so, was so excited and she looked so beautiful that night. I remember just her being nervous and excited all at the same time, which everyone is when you go to the Met. It's a lot of cameras. The thing about the Met is that all the, the nerves and everything is just getting there. And once you're there and you walk up the stairs and you go into the actual ceremony, it's over so fast. But just the anxiety of getting ready and making sure it's, and being on time is, is the stressful part. I love when I get the opportunity to be a part of someone's first, because I think that's a memory that no one will forget. And then Ariana is so iconic. Like we'll revisit that look for years and years and years. There, there'll be a retrospective of her career, her life, and you'll see that dress and other dresses and maybe some ponytails, you know. I always tell her like, I, I feel like her ponytail should be in the Smithsonian. The theme for that year was camp. What's more campier than a Disney a Disney film? But it was a real story in, in that sometimes the day it calls me her fairy godbrother or godmother, depending on how I'm acting that day. The story was that she was leaving Disney and this was before Euphoria premiered. And so it was kind of her shedding, not shedding her Disney image, but just moving into more of her, because you know, Rue is totally different from KC, like way, way different from KC. And so it was, that was to pay homage to her career as this Disney princess. We knew when Euphoria premiered that people would get to see a whole nother side of Zendaya, the actress. And a lot of people didn't see this, but she actually lost her glass slipper at the top of the stairs. So that was like the final hurrah and paying homage to Disney, which gave her the start of her career. So this, I'm really proud to say this was actually one of the first viral fashion moments. I got a call from my manager at the time, really casually, she said, oh, Celine, team called and she wants to meet you. You know, I was like, Celine who? Like, Celine Dion. I said, who? She said, Celine Dion, fool. So I went to, um, I went to the Billboard Awards and to meet her. I waited for her in her dressing room. She came in the dressing room and she said, I've been following your career because my kids watch Casey Undercover and you dress Casey. <laughs> what that outfit and that that image did was disrupted the way people think about and thought about Celine. Like we were used to this very glamorous beads and sequins and rhinestones and the voice and the, the personification of the diva and, and to see her in streetwear and she was wearing this Vatmont tribute, um, Titanic tribute sweatshirt and just some jeans and a sandal in a bag. And I think that it really kind of mess people up. It's like, oh wait, like Celine Dion's a real person, you know. I did it because Celine Dion is one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. And her knowledge of fashion and construction and, and couture and, and designers is so vast. And I learned so much from working with her. And when I found out who she really was, was on the inside, not the, the image that we had all created of her on the outside, I'm like, of course you will want to wear this sweater, of course. Kerry Washington at the Vanity Fair party, she was wearing Zuhair Mara Couture. I love this collection. The collection was based on Egypt and Egyptian goddesses. And when I think of Kerry, I think of her in that way. When I saw it, I just thought it was so amazing. It was encrusted and it just, it just made me feel like this is something that Cleopatra would have worn. There was a little pushback because I think someone else said that it's too costumey, but I'm like, it's a moment, you know what I mean? Like. And don't let other people's fears or, you know, or something that makes someone else uncomfortable, don't let them project that onto you. She ended up wearing it and she called me the next day. She was like, you were right. She's like, as soon as I walked through the door, everyone was saying how great I look. Everyone said that the dress, the, that it was so interesting and so beautiful and she looked so regal. And that night, Tracy Ellis Ross actually wore something from that from that collection as well. Here are these two you know, goddesses, queens, if you will, 
in the same party, in the same collection. Point of the story, the more of the story is that I'm always right and whoever tells you different is always wrong. She was wearing custom Armani Privé. That was one of the things, COVID was such a traumatic, devastating time for the world. Looking back at it, it was a couple things that came out of it that end up being beautiful moments, right? One being the entire world was going through the exact same thing at the exact same time. And we got all got a chance to just sit still Second, like myself and her entire family got to literally be in that room so close to her when she won her first Emmy. And it was just so much love and joy and excitement. And we were all so proud and we got to like run up and hug her and, and just wrap our arms around her and like surround her with love the entire night. And had it not been in lockdown, we wouldn't have shared that moment with her the way we did. It was, it's one of my fondest moments of um, being around her. I looked an absolute mess. Everybody else had on black, and here I am with this like rusty orange like tracksuit. I don't know what I was thinking, but I also didn't think that I would, you know, you take it for granted. She's sitting in front of a little computer screen, and you know, I didn't know that it was capturing as much as it did, but still, you know, wrong outfit, but right time. And I'll always remember that moment. So I got the call from Sam, the creator and director of Euphoria. Um, Sam Levinson, he asked me, this was all in like heavy, heavy lockdown. So I never got a chance to sit with him. Everything was done from Zoom and a bunch of conversations. It was great, it was, it was, it was challenging for that reason. You know, I wasn't able to physically be in the room with her or around her. But it was also, I felt so creative and for that look to come out and to get the type of love that it got was, was really incredible. I'm super proud of that because I got to add costume designer, you know, to my resume. And I think that dress will become iconic because I think that film is something that people will go and reference, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now. And for me to have a little small piece of, of that legacy, it makes me really proud. I, I've been actually dressed in Tom for a few years now. I think Tom is the ultimate movie star and, you know, he, he works and he promotes his film and then he kind of disappears for a while, which is really great. He has still a mystique around him that people are still trying to figure out, I think, and, and which, what makes him so appealing to people. And before him and Zendaya's relationship was public, when you get to dress the, the two leads from a, a, major, a major movie, it's always a big accomplishment. It's a lot of work, but it's a, it's a big accomplishment. And Emma Watson wearing Alexander McQueen. Our relationship is really new. I am a firm believer that the universe puts you in people's lives exactly at the moment you're supposed to be there. She said, that, you know, would you consider working with me? I'm like, would you consider working with me? Emma is iconic on her own. She has a, a way to, of describing, you know, the feeling of things that she likes. And I think I, I style from an emotional place and I think she wears clothes from an emotional place and she's also really a champion for trying to help fashion become more sustainable and I think that's one of my biggest profiles. The easiest way to become or do something that's sustainable is to wear clothes that someone else, someone else has already worn. It's the easiest way, it's a no-brainer, right? You know, go to a thrift store, a consignment store, a vintage shop and, and buy something that already has a life and, and you know, continue to give it a life and give it away to someone else, hand it down or even resell it. So I think that, you know, that really brought us closer. Well, I've done SNL a few times. One thing I will tell you guys about Megan Thee Stallion that you might not know is that she is the nicest, sweetest, most patient person I think I've probably ever met. And Saturday Night Live is nerve wracking. And, and when someone is that nice, it makes you want to work extra, extra hard for her. I think she did incredible. I think she looked incredible. The picture you saw was her walking into 30 Rock in a, a, a full uh, PP Pink uh, Valentino look. Whew, that was a tough one. That night Zendaya was being honored as CFDA's fashion icon. So we felt like that it had to be amazing, especially after Rihanna's look. Rihanna is kind of 
you know. And you know, I, we know that we could never top top three, but we wanted to be a close second. And I also wanted to be young, and and we chose red because red is always, to me, it's the color of power. So there has that body and that those abs and. You know, why not? It's, it was the night to really go for it. That look has become iconic, and I say it because the way you know you've created an iconic look is that people wear it on Halloween. It becomes a Halloween costume. So if you have never done anything or worn anything that has become a Halloween costume, you are not iconic. When it comes to American fashion, that is the, the top of the top. And, you know, for me to be the first ever stylist to, to, be, to be recognized, you know, I'm overjoyed and then I'm nervous because I have to give a speech uh, in front of these people that, that I look up to and grew up wanting. And, you know, me coming from, from where I came from, like, most of these clothes weren't affordable and, and now like these people know my name and I'm friends with some of them and it's just it's just the the biggest thing of it is that I hope that I am a an example that any and everything is possible. If you really stick to the core values that that you're taught by whoever raised you, you know, work really hard, be kind to people, treat people the way you want to be treated. I've impressed and, and done things and, and hopefully shifted culture a bit with that the CFDA is recognizing me and honoring me with this award that no one else has gotten previously. So it's, you know, I'm just, I don't know how to feel. I'm happy, so. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and let me know which of these looks were your favorite. Comment down below.